great sound, isn't it? The Twins launched some serious fireworks here last night, led by Brian Dozier, who delivered a three-run homer and four RBI. Eduardo Escobar, also a contributor in the Twins' seven-run third inning. Escobar continues to hit the bat well. And Joe Mauer, can you say another three-hit night for one of the hottest hitters in baseball the last couple weeks? Joe Mauer. Clear skies at Target Field, where it's University of Minnesota tonight at the ballpark and Goldie Gopher's head is spinning about what's in store this evening. Kyle Gibson coming off his longest outing of the season. Failed to get a win. Hopes to get one tonight. Jose Quintana for the White Sox. He's had success against the Twins. Welcome to Twins Baseball here on Fox Sports North. Joe Mauer, Jack, is on a mission. He's red hot and uh, as I look around the plaza area out here in right field at our set, what a great night for baseball, Tom. I mean, you can't ask for a better night. And Joe Maurer's on fire. The Twins are heating, that all, heating up offensively. It should be a lot of excitement. It has been more than Joe just being Joe over his last nine games at the plate. He's been one of the best hitters in baseball. 15 hits, fourth most in Major League Baseball. Nine RBI, seventh most in that span. He enjoyed his best April in three years. It ended last night, hit 318. RBI totals are up. Everything is up for Joe Maurer of late. So the question is for Quintana tonight, how do you get to Joe Maurer? Well, when you look at one of the game's premier hitters, and Joe Maurer is one of those guys, you realize that when they're hot, there's not a lot of weaknesses. You saw two pitches up in the zone, and you saw how Joe was able to handle those. Now we're going to see two pitches in the middle part of the plate. That one on the inner half, he's able to barrel the ball up and drive it hard. This one on the outer half, about belt high. What do you do? Well, the only thing you can do is hope for the best, make them a little bit uncomfortable, but the great hitters, there's one common denominator. You cannot repeat a sequence. In other words, don't try to pattern a guy and say, I'm going to set him up for this pitch in this location because they're going to wear you out. Joe's just on fire right now. Coming up, Dick and Bert dive into Kyle Gibson's continuing quest for consistency on the mound. Can Gibby get her done tonight? We're about to find out.
Sports North is presented by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By Budweiser. Still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. And by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of Major League Baseball. And her promo code, Twin City. It's U of M night here at Target Field. Floyd of Rosedale is here. So is the Little Brown Jug and a University of Missouri product. Kyle Gibson will make the start tonight for the Minnesota Twins, hoping to make it two in a row against the Chicago White Sox. And a beautiful Friday night for baseball here at Target Field. Dick and Burr with you for game two of this four-game series. So far this year, Kyle Gibson has had one quality start followed by a non-quality start, then a quality start, then a non-quality start. And it's a continuation of a maddening pattern for him in his big league career. Yeah, we saw a lot of that of Kyle Gibson last year. You know, one good one, one bad. And you know what? Last outing, he actually pitched pretty good against the Seattle Mariners. He went into the eighth inning. But this is what we've seen, a good one and then maybe a not so good one. But here tonight against the Chicago White Sox, hopefully that will be a good one. His last three, you can see a total of one win, one loss, very good earned run average. And this will be just the third time that the White Sox have seen Kyle Gibson. And you can see what we're talking about. When he's been good, he's been very, very good. And when he's been bad, he's been very, very bad. Yeah, you know what? He doesn't have a lot of strikeouts. He's a contact type pitcher. And you can see largest in wins and losses since 2014. The difference in the earned run average. But hopefully he'll have a good one here tonight. Well, the Twins will take on the White Sox. They'd like to put together another winning homestand. They are two and two so far on the homestand. We'll have game two with the White Sox coming up in a moment. Good old Kyle. <laughs> I don't have anything nice to say about Gibby. Kind of takes a, a, a verbal beating every day, but takes it well. We love Kyle. Funny, uh, tons of potential. Power sinker. A great slider. He's going to be a, a pitcher in the biggest for a long time. Gibson is, is one of the, the young pitchers that I think is really going to have a great season this year. Gibson started the year with a short start against the Tigers, then had his best start of the year against the Royals. In his third start, he could not complete six innings to qualify for a quality start, but then he came back with a good one against the Mariners, and we'll just have to wait and see what we're in store for uh, or tonight 
with Gibson on the mound. Robert Ventura very disappointed in how his team played in the month of April. It ended on a very bad note last night. White Sox didn't play well. It's been a difficult week for the White Sox. He's had to change his lineup around today. Adam Eaton suffering the effects of the flu. So Micah Johnson's leading off. Alexei Ramirez batting second, then Melky Cabrera, Jose Abreu, Adam LaRoche, Avisail Garcia, Connor Gillespie, Tyler Flowers, and J.B. Shuck. We'll see how Kyle Gibson's sinker works here tonight. Good way to start. Strike one down in the strike zone. Micah Johnson, Alexei Ramirez, and Melky Cabrera in the Chicago first. Gibson making his fifth start of the year. Yeah, Adam Eaton, he's been struggling, so... Robin Ventura has him out of the ball game here tonight. And actually, Adam Eaton after the ball game last night actually shaved. He didn't like the person that was behind that beard. And I guess he'll have to wait another day or two to uh, see how that new person does. Yeah, flu bugs kind of been going through uh, the White Sox. Adam LaRoche has been uh, beset uh, with some flu symptoms over the last few days. One and two to Micah Johnson. Chopper foul back to the screen. Yeah, Micah Johnson, 24 years old in his rookie season. He's a speedster, a guy that you want to keep off the bases. A couple of years ago, stole 84 bases in the minor leagues in 110 chances. So he likes to get on and run. Missing inside, two and two. Gibson. With only six strikeouts on the year, and uncharacteristically, he's walked 12, including five on his opening night assignment. And Suzuki hangs on to the foul tip, one away. Northland for defense for the Twins. Another left hander on the mound that keeps Marcia on the bench. Escobar in left, Robinson in center, Hunter in right. Luke Santana, Dozier, Power the infielders, and Kurt Suzuki behind the plate. Greg Gibson calling balls and strikes. Marvin Hudson's at first. Chad Fairchild at second. And Jim Joyce, the crew chief, at third. Popped up. Wide at first. Bauer crossing the line. Appears to have room. Two down. Boy, you gotta love that. He's right there. Manny or Al Alexi Ramirez, who has always hit well against the Twins, jumping on that first pitch and popping it up. That's what you like as a starting pitcher. Get some quick outs, especially in the first three innings. Melky Cabrera will bat. Cabrera in his first year with the White Sox, hitting okay. White Sox are struggling to hit and score runs like the Twins have been, and through the month of April anyway. Twins hitting 243, White Sox hitting 241. Yeah, and they're in the middle of the pack in the American <laughs> League, so it's not like you know they're in the, the bottom. There are a lot of clubs struggling offensively. Two and zero oh to Cabrera, Texas Rangers, hitting 210, playing half their games and maybe the best hitting ballpark in the American League. And that squibbed to Plouf, who caught up in the fly. Cabrera's gone, and Gibson has a one-two-three for inning.
top of the first inning. Twins hoping that uh, particularly here at home run scoring will be less of a concern than it has been. It certainly wasn't last night. Paul Molitor coming back with the same lineup here tonight. Brian Dozier, Torrey Hunter, Joe Mauer, Trevor Plouffe, Kurt Suzuki, Eduardo Escobar, Kenny Vargas, Shane Robinson, Danny Santana on the Menards batting order. Yeah, that lineup right there produced 13 hits and 12 runs last night. They'll see how they fare against this lefty, a crafty lefty, Jose Quintana, making his fifth start of the year. Pretty good numbers against the Twins over his career. In 10 career starts, three and two, with a very good 4.4 earned run average. And his season has resembled Gibson's in terms of good start followed by a bad start, then a good one, and then a bad one. Actually, just the opposite. There's Dozier lifting the first one. We saw the Twins. Oh, young man brought his glove and he stuck it up and caught the foul ball. And he, uh, I think I've just seen the biggest smile I've ever seen in my life. One strike to Dozier. It was a bad start, a good start, a bad one, and a good one. So both a high fly to right field. Tracking it in the corner is Garcia, and he makes the catch one away. We saw last night the Twins jumping on Chris Sale early, being very aggressive early in the, in the count. And now Dozier goes after the first two pitches from Quintana. Northland for defense for the White Sox. Cabrera in left. Shuck in center in place of the ill Adam Eaton. Abisayo Garcia in right. Gillespie, Ramirez, Johnson, Abreu, and Flowers surrounding the pitcher. Jose Quintana. There's Torrey Hunter. Taking low, ball one. Well, the only difference between Quintana and Sale is only about, uh, I'd say, nine or ten miles an hour difference. Quintana more of a, you know, he has to hit his spots. He likes to work inside to right-handed hitters. They say he's been having trouble with that little cutter in on righties in his last start. He did a lot better job against the Royals. Seven innings, only gave up a couple runs. 3-0 and oh now to Torrey Hunter. Power on deck. Quintana in his fourth season with the White Sox. Last two seasons, able to pitch 200 innings. The corner, three and one. I should say 200 innings in each season. Pulled down the line, a foul ball, three and two. See, even that pitch right there, middle in. Quintana making his 92nd career start. He has 25 wins, 25 losses. Take a look at his windup. He'll step back, rotate that hip. Foul back by Hunter. There's that little bit of hitch, but what he does that allows his arm to catch up to the lower part of his body. Watch this right here. He gets set a little bit there, and then trying to create that good downward type of plane toward the catcher's glove. Old foul. The White Sox in the rotation are about as left-handed as the Twins are right-handed. They've got Sale, they've got Quintana, they've got Danks. They'll have Carlos Rodon, their outstanding pitching prospect right now, pitching out of the bullpen. He figures to be a starter at some point this year. Yeah, not a, not, not a good night for Chris Sales. Didn't get a whole lot of help from his fielders, but he didn't want to use that as an excuse. He right. said, I was terrible. I gave up a lot of hits and just didn't pitch well. Three and two to Hunter. He's having a prolonged battle with Jose Quintana here in the first. Up the middle and a base hit. Good at bat for the veteran Hunter, and he's aboard with one out in the first. Torrey now nine hits and 24 at bats against Quintana, so he came in hitting 348. That has gone up. And a good battle, like you mentioned, Dick. Finally, a fastball that Torrey hit right back up the middle. 
First hit of the ball game goes to Tory Hunter and the Twins. Here is Bauer. Bauer's hit left-handers very well this year. He's hit this particular left-hander awfully well. Nine hits, 21 at bats, and two home runs. Around the hands, ball one. Like Jack Morris and uh, Tom did a great job in the, in the pregame showing Joe's hot spots. And right now, they're anywhere in the strike zone. He was swinging a hot bat. Hunter back. Quintana, very good move to first base. He has 11 career pickoffs. You can see even from that shot there, the outfield shifting. Bauer's been pretty consistent, even though he's pulled the ball and gotten more hits to the pull side. His hits to right field have been. To right center. There haven't been many at all that have been pulled into the corner. You can see where Garcia is, and he's playing to the left of the 365 sign on the wall. There's a huge expanse of outfield between Garcia and the right field line. 2 and 0. Oh. 2 and 1. And we probably won't see the outfield shifts. Move much until he starts pulling the ball into yeah. that corner. Yeah, you see eight to right field, but a lot of them are, you know, almost where Garcia is played. He has hit a couple balls down the right field line, but that's usually on that slow breaking ball. And Quintana has that slow curveball, but the way that they're playing, if I'm the pitcher, I'm going to try to just bust him hard away and hopefully hit it, you know, somewhere into left center or right center. Or I have Cabrera, which he is shading that line a little bit in left field. Two and one to Mauer. Double play grounded. Ramirez to the bag. Mauer is retired. And the Twins send just three to the plate in the third. I'm looking forward to playing for Molly a lot. Hall of Famer. Don't want to let him down. The most knowledgeable guy I've ever been around in my life about the game of baseball. Great feel for the game. He's as prepared and as, as calculating as anyone I've ever been around. He wants to win. He wants to win now. Uh, whenever you play for a guy like that who has 3,000 hits, you better sit down and talk to him. On U of M night here at Target Field, the Gopher alum is managing the uh, his a childhood team, the Twins. Perkins also an all Big Ten player at the University of Minnesota. Chopper left side. Bluff has it. Plenty of time to fire across to get a Brayu. First ground ball out for Kyle Gibson. And yeah, I don't know, the cradle of coaches, maybe not, but the four head coaches 
or managers in the four major sports all uh, from the University of Minnesota. Of course Saunders and McHale were teammates to go for basketball team. And uh, Todd Richards. Former uh, wild coach. Paul was uh, genuinely uh, impressed in his office today. The ball headed up the middle. Dozier can't corral it, and LaRoche has what do you call that? An infield single, even though the ball ended up in the outfield. It's a single. Yeah, it's a single, but uh, you know, I don't know if it's a uh, it's an infield single. But we'll just put down a base hit. All right. And tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. The University of California and the University of Minnesota are the only two universities that can claim four head coaches or managers in the NHL, NBA, MLB, and NFL. University of Arizona has three. Nice look at caps handed out here. Yes. Here's Garcia. Fastball off the plate. Quintana able to get a double play off the bat of Joe Maurer. See if Kyle Gibson can get a ground ball here. Five double plays turned behind Kyle, making his fifth start. Chop foul. Now, most pitchers would like to have twice as many strikeouts as walks. For Gibson, it's the other way around. Just six strikeouts and a dozen walks. Is that cause for concern for you? Well, he's never really been a strikeout pitcher. So even last year, he didn't have a lot of strikeouts. But the walks are high. And, uh, you know, that, that I know throughout the summer will get better. One and one to Garcia. Two and one. Gibson last year worked 179 and a third innings, had 57 walks and 107 strikeouts. He's averaging about five strikeouts per nine innings so far in the starts that he's had the 45 and just over three walks per nine innings. Not bad. But they are high this year. Hit hard to center. Robinson heading back. That ball is over his head and off the wall. LaRoche well, doesn't run well. He's at third base. Robinson has some issue with it, but they still have to stop LaRoche at third. That ball drilled over Robinson's head. Second and third with one away. Well, the, for Gibson, if he keeps the ball up, it's not going to have any sink. And we'll take a look at this pitch right here. You see where that ball ended up about thigh high. That ball's knee high. It might get a ground ball, but instead, just out of the reach of Robertson, who Went all the way to the warning track and LaRoche you know, is at second base, but as you said, he's not the quickest of foot. And he stops at third base, so a double for Garcia, his fourth of the year. This is where it would be nice if Gibson could get a strikeout. He's facing Connor Gillespie. Gillespie, two for five against uh, Gibson with a walk and a strikeout. In the middle of the infield playing back. Side ball one. Must be very good fastball hitter. When Gibson's gotten strikeouts, it's usually been on his breaking ball. But you've got to get to, to two strikes to have a chance at strike three. One and zero. Oh. There's a changeup getting away. One and one. Gorgeous night here in Minneapolis. About a little pop up like that, but keep it fair. Saw Suzuki go in, sit inside, and the ball, good pitch. Now Kyle Gibson has a chance to get a strikeout right here. One ball, two strikes. A swing and a miss and the changeup. A foul ball, strike two. And the strikeout pitch has been a breaking ball down and in to left handed batter. Right underneath their swing. Ooh. And he threw.
threw it down and in and hit him in the ankle. And they're loaded up. And just tried to overthrow that breaking ball. Second hit batsman of the year for Kyle Gibson and loads of bases with one out. He tried to go to that slider down and in, and the ball just kept biting and ended up hitting the left foot of Gillespie. You've heard the term, many of you have, the back foot slider. That was legitimately a back foot slider. It hit him in the back foot. <laughs> Here's Flowers. Now, this is a guy you need a ground ball off of if you can. Flowers, tremendous power. But he not the quickest of foot either down that line. Facing inside, ball one. He's going to have a hard time controlling that first pitch fastball here tonight. One and oh. There's the corner. One and one. Kyle, 27 years old, in his third season with the Twins. Last year, a 13 game winner in 31 starts. Darting fastball gets an awkward swing and a miss. Well, you talk to strikeouts that he got for, to left handers down and in, to right handers, he'll throw that sinker down and in. When he is on, he'll pick up the strikeouts off of right handers down and in. A swing like that, that would suggest to me anyway that there's a lot of movement on that pitch. Flowers right. committed to the swing and it almost hit him in the knuckles. See if they go back in again. Watch Suzuki behind the plate. Santana right. Dozier Mauer just right. what the doctor ordered got the ground ball he needed a hit batter and two hits but the White Sox come up empty thanks to the ground ball double play Second inning at Target Field. I'm Marnie Gellner, and tonight the Twins are celebrating University of Minnesota night at Target Field. They have a couple of prominent Minnesota alum in Paul Molitor and Glenn Perkins, and the two trophies are on display here, the little brown jug and Floyd of Rosedale. 
And Glenn Perkins told me that he made a miniature Floyd of Rosedale. He had his wife buy a piggy bank, and then he spray-painted it that bronze, put a little uh, base on it, and then took it on caravan this winter. Perkins and Molitor were on the same caravan leg that made a stop in Iowa. And he said, as you can imagine, miniature Floyd of Rosedale was maybe not such a big hit with those Iowa fans, but he said <laughs> Perkins and Molitor sure had fun with it. That uh, here's Plouffe, and he drops down a bunt, but then a goal foul. That uh, appearance was down in the Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I've been down there a couple of times where they just have a packed house. And Cedar Rapids, a great uh, baseball town, but of course it's 30 minutes from Iowa City, the home of the Hawkeyes, and uh, that's a pretty nice move by Glenn because he's holding the thing up and. Some, were you guys in a fast car to get out of town? Yeah, I wasn't with the group this year, but I heard about it. I just thought that was awesome. Here's a pop up near first base. Abreu in foul ground makes the catch one away. Twins have uh, kind of adopted Cedar Rapids and made it part of Twins territory, but make no mistake, it's Hawkeye country. And so uh, Glenn uh, took advantage of the opportunity to. Twist the uh, knife a little bit down there. Have some fun. One down. Here's Kurt Suzuki. The Twins finished the month of April two games below the 500 mark, 10 and 12 in April. Another non-winning month, and that we've talked about a lot of things statistically that the Twins need to accomplish. Winning at home, a big one, and so far they've done okay with that. But they need to start building. Winning months in this four year drought that the Twins have been in. They've had just four winning months. A weak ground ball hit to the right side. Easy play for Johnson, two down. And so we'll see if May might become one of those winning months that the Twins so desperately need. Later on this month, on the 26th, it's Healthcare Professionals Night. At Target Field, special ticket packages are available. That includes exclusive Twins branded scrubs. A limited number of ticket packages available, and your only way to get your Twins scrubs. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash healthcare for tickets and more info. Two down, here's Escobar. And a strike. Dick, remember the Twins started one and six, but over the last 15 ball games, they're yeah. nine and six, so they're playing a lot better baseball. They just started off slow. That roller coaster just had a, a bad start. Ramirez fires on the run. A very close play. Nice play and by We'll Ramirez. see if the Twins challenge it. Paul Molitor's already out of the dugout. White Sox are told to stay on the field here while the Twins contemplate their next move if they have one. Well, Ramirez has to go and on the run get something on that throw. It's a bang bang play. He's out. Yep. A one, two, three second for Jose Quintana.
Twins Baseball on Fox Sports North is presented by Century Link, your link to what's next. By NorthlandFord.com and your local Northland Ford dealer. And by Grand Casino. The best stories start here. No score as we go to the third. Each team has had a, a base runner with uh, the White Sox putting together a substantial threat in the second inning. They loaded the bases with one out. But Gibson got a busted back ground ball double play. And now J.B. Shuck will lead off the third. Yeah, Shuck in his first season with the White Sox. Claimed off waivers from the Cleveland Indians back in November. One and one. Shuck, one of those guys when he gets sent to the minor leagues, outstanding minor league numbers, but he just hasn't had that chance to come up and play on a regular basis with the Astros, Angels, Indians, and now here in Chicago. Nice bunt. Gibson fires. What a play by Kyle Gibson. If the Twins next gold glove winning pitcher is not Kyle Gibson, I don't know who it will be because he really fields his position well. Whether it's fielding bunts or covering the bag at first. Well, he's the only one that could have got this ball right here. Shuck laying it down and Gibson going there and setting himself up to do exactly what he did. Watch himself turn his body, barehand it, and all in one motion, flip it over to Mauer. Very nice play. Down Micah Johnson takes a strike. You run to the ball, you pick it up, look at those big old paws right there. And then puts something on the throw. And a great defensive play, but you know, it's expected. Because they are the world's best athlete. Well, why? It's gotten uh, a little exaggerated, yeah. as it used to be the best athletes on the field, but now the world's, world's. best athletes. Yes. I went to the next level. Decathletes. Call no. us what you want. No, I meant in comparison, decathletes are not. The world's best no, athletes. Athletes, no. Marathon runners. No, they could, they couldn't hit a baseball, throw a baseball. They run, they swim, they bike, they throw javelins. Two and two. Somehow, I, that yeah, you're that not th buying it. No, that thread. Just imagine me with you in a pole vault, and I, and I just that poor pole. <laughs> two and two. Swing and a miss, and Gibson gets a strikeout. Second time he got Johnson, and his second strikeout. Sanford Health Injury Report. Tim Stauffer put on the disabled list today with a right intercostal strain. Ryan Presley called up. He's here. He's available. He hasn't pitched for a few days. The Twins might make another bullpen move tomorrow. Brian Dunsing expected to be activated off the disabled list. You know, when the Twins... Changed uh, the makeup of the bullpen by not bringing Jared Burton or Anthony Swarzak back. I think a lot of people, at least I, thought that, uh, okay, well, that opens the door for Tonkin and Presley. And coming out of spring training, neither one was on the team, but now they're both on the team. Yeah, a month later. You know, last couple of years, it has been the oblique strain. Now it's the intercostal strain. The ground Santana has it hit him in the ankle. Could be another error charge to Danny Santana. Yeah, we've seen the good of Danny Santana in short and sometimes not the good. And this is part of not the good. Sets himself up to make a throw, but maybe took his eye off the ball as the ball hit his right ankle. Pick the glove up. For Santana, his seventh year of the year at short. In 20 games now. The next round for the White Sox and Melky Cabrera, the batter. Fastball, strike one. Last two years with the Toronto Blue Jays. Strike two over the inside corner. Gibson doing a better job here in this inning of hitting the corners with his fastball. Well, 
Allen, the pitching coach, watching very closely. Ramirez has not attempted a stolen bases yet this year. Both these clubs have been very unsuccessful in stealing bases. White Sox only four of nine in success rate. Twins six of 13. One of several things that has caused a little separation already in the American League Central. The two best base stealing teams are the Tigers and the Royals. And that's one of the many reasons why they have pulled away from the other three teams in the division after a month in the season. Yeah, Ramirez last year 21 stolen bases in 25 attempts. So he's capable, but gets a pretty quick hold. Picks up the leg this time and a liner to Santana. That ends the inning. An extra batter, an extra handful of pitches, but no harm done after the error. In Minnesota, can you visit a wide range of museums? Whether you're an art, history, science, military, plant, or animal lover, we've got museums here for everyone. Visit exploreminnesota.com and discover a world that's only in Minnesota. Share and tag your Minnesota experiences with hashtag only in MN. Most of the museums are open year round, making them the perfect addition to any Minnesota vacation. Now, since we were talking about the caravan, Gibson and Suzuki comparing notes in the dugout. This year in the caravan, I had the southwestern swing. Rochester, Sioux Falls. And the ball dribbled up a line foul. We ended up in, we didn't end up. On our route, we went to Owatonna, where they have the, like, the reptile museum. And I had the opportunity to hold a huge lizard and a huge big yellow snake. Yeah. And I could not do it. I don't blame I, I could not do it. I don't blame him. And enough back to the mound, and Quintana throws Vargas out, one away. Yeah, there's two things I don't like snakes and spiders. Spiders, I don't care. You, you just don't? step on them and they're dead. But I, I, I'm not well, a I never tried that. <laughs> and I was on the caravan uh, with Brian Dunsing, Brian Dozier. And they let the big yellow snake wrap itself around them three or four times. And I could not do that. I wouldn't do that. There's not enough money in the state of Minnesota to get him. me to do that. Here's Shane Robinson, all one. You know, we saw Chris Sale last night just kind of overpower the Twins, and that's what he was trying to do. That's kind of his game. But Quintana is a little different pitcher than him. He's got to hit his spots, change speeds. There's a fastball to get back to even. He's making his 11th career start against the Twins, but over his last six starts, he is 3 0 with a 1.91 earned run average against the Twins. 
just off the plate two and one. That's the way he'll pitch. He'll try to stay away from the heart of the plate. And you know, early on he struggled, but they say his last outing was a lot like the Quintana that they expect. Got a good arm. Foul back. We took something off that pitch right there. Robinson getting a chance to play. Jordan Schaefer injured a knee the other day, but he's fine. In fact, Paul Molitor told me before the game he expects Schaefer will be in the starting lineup tomorrow when the Twins will face a right hand. Now Robinson has done a great job. Two and two. Picking up some hits. Foul tip. Flowers hangs on. Two down. Quintana picks up his first strikeout. Carsoup.com trivia question Who was the first Big Ten Conference pitcher to win all of his conference starts in a season? This, uh, this question is. sounds like it came from Bruce Wolf. Would it be Dave Whitfield? Santana dribbling up the line. Foul Bruce Wolf is uh, part of our great TV crew here. Dave Winfield was a great pitcher for the U. Think about what I mean. He was drafted football, basketball, and baseball. Mm -hmm. What an athlete! Now, is this because he was a pitcher? Is that why you're saying he was a great athlete? This, this no, whole no, notion. Dave, Dave Winfield okay. was a great athlete. I'm not even putting him in our class. Okay. <laughs> Two strikes to Santana. Santana gave up a one out single to Hunter after a nine pitch at bat. He's really settled down into a groove. Twins haven't even gotten the ball out of the infield since Hunter's base hit. Ground ball. And fielded by Ramirez. Couple of ground ball outs, a strikeout, seven in a row, set down by Quintana. Jose Abreu will lead it off in his 164 career games. He has been such a game changer that only three other players in the last 102 years have ever accomplished what he already has by hitting over 300 with more than 40 home runs and 120 runs batted in. He joins Hall of Famer Chuck Klein, Rudy York, and Ryan Braun, the only other players to accomplish all that in their first 164 career games. Gibson gets ahead of him one strike. Rookie of the year last year in the American League. So we're going to miss two strikes. 145 games he played in last year, hit 317. That was fifth best in the American League. 36 home runs, drove in 107 runs. 
Not a bad rookie season for now a 28-year-old from Cuba. And the first time his parents had ever seen him play in the United States was at last year's All-Star game here at Target Field. One and two. Swing and a miss. Good breaking ball, and Gibson gets his third strikeout. Good slider down and away, and Abreu going out of his swing zone. See where he stands in the box and chases that pitch down and away. So Gibson, who came into the ball game in four starts with only six strikeouts, picks up his third here already. With the first out in the fourth. Nearly full moon suspended over the right field wall. Beautiful Friday night tomorrow. It's supposed to be spectacular here. Gibson with another nice fielding play and out number two. Every weeknight, don't miss MLB Whip Around on Fox Sports 1 with highlights, instant analysis, and live look ins from around the league. MLB Whip Around weeknights at 6 p.m. Central on Fox Sports 1. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now, in retrospect, how good of a fielder were you? Because we've talked about Gibson. He is very good at fielding his position. We've already seen two examples. You can really help yourself out there on the mound if you can handle the choppers hit back to in bunts. Yeah, I never uh, won a gold glove, but uh, you know, I felt I did a good job of fielding my position. Just that a lot of the balls that I threw went over my head. Your outfielders. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I made them gold gloves. Then the truck reminds me of not only my outfielders' heads, also from some fans' heads. Yeah. You probably no, I, took it with some source of pride that Kirby Puckett won and, some gold gloves, and oh, you were on the sure. mound for some of those. You know what? I always say that the pitcher, I had to throw that ball right there and allow it, let them hit it just to where Kirby Puckett could jump up over the fence and catch it. Now Kirby never gave you one of his gold glove awards as a token uh, of. No, no, okay. I would not have taken okay. it. Okay. Right. Two and one. Swing and a miss, two and two. Yeah, a lot of people said I probably played with a gold glove. Heavy. <laughs> two and two to Avasail Garcia. He blasted one to center field just out of the reach of Robinson in center field. Yeah, Gibson hasn't made many mistakes so far. He just left the fastball up and that allowed Garcia to extend those strong arms. Down and away, full count. So far, Gibson has three strikeouts and no walks. He doesn't. I want to put Garcia aboard here. Connor Gillespie, the on deck hitter. First three ball count so far for uh, Gibson. 50 pitches, 30 strikes. Breaking ball hit to center. Playable this time for Robinson. And a 1 2 3 4 for Gibson.
Looking forward to walk the wild play all the way into June. Let's go, boys. I didn't grow this beard for nothing. Good luck in the playoffs. We'll be watching. Go get them and, and go wild. What's up, wild? Congratulations on making it to the playoffs. Now go get that Stanley Cup so I can drink out of it. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Fox Sports North, your home for pre- and post-game coverage throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs for the Minnesota Wild. Tonight, after the game, reaction, game one in Chicago. Visit FoxSportsNorth.com for Showtime's channel information throughout the series. Brian Dozier leading off the fourth inning for the Twins. And I guess we have to wish the Wild good yeah. luck. Yeah. Go get them. You know, back in another lifetime, I did North Star games in the playoffs. Uh, this time of the year was always the most fun. I was able to do some baseball games one night and then go over to the old Met Center and do an NHL playoff game, and boy, that was fun. Some great series against Chicago and St. Louis and then Edmonton. We'll see if the Wild can uh, do as everyone around here is hoping, and that is have a long, deep, successful playoff run. One and one to Brian Dozier. Ball hit hard on one hop to Ramirez. One down. Quintana getting some ground ball out. Seven ground ball out so far with a couple fly outs and a strikeout. Dozier hit uh, a fly ball to right in his first at bat. And Hunter grounded a single up the middle. Those are the only two balls that have left the infield against Quintana. Swing and a foul, one strike. Corey with one home run. Did not enjoy a good April offensively. Hitting a thousand in the month of May. Players probably don't do it, it's just another game, but the fan in me tends to look at a baseball season almost like a calendar. Okay, April's done. Now we start a new month. And for areas of the game that you know the team you're following has struggled, well, it's the start of a new month. Let's you know get off on the right foot in May and see where we can go. Well, baseball it. players do that too. You know, I mean, we're going to have you know two or three bad outings in a row, and that calendar turns sometimes. Becomes more of a mental thing than anything. It's not physical. It's saying, okay, I just had a bad month of June. Here comes July. I've always pitched well in July. Boom, there's that positive luck. Two and two to Hunter. Three and two, Mauer on deck. Almost like a second opening day in that regard. You just you can't do anything about what happened. Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, or, you know, for that matter, the whole month, you just right. have to try to approach a new day, new game with a new state of mind. And a tapper foul. Twins did hit well with men in scoring position, over 300, in fact, with men in scoring position in the month of April. Had a man in scoring position yet in May. Hard hit. They might now. Chuck is going to scamper after it. Hunter rounding first. He'll try. Oh, he'll hold up halfway to second base. He was trying to get those 39 year old legs uh, working and get a hustle double, but he'll hold up with a single. Oh, that's what you want your, your everybody to do. And that Torrey Hunter, good example of that. You round first base and you find out whether that. That outfielder being the center fielder Chuck right here if he handles this ground ball hit to him cleanly Chuck getting behind the ball picking it up and then getting it back in and there's Torrey right there hustling around and he'll go about maybe a third of the way and then get back Bauer bounced into a double play his first time up with Hunter at first
Quintana and Mauer's first at bat basically stayed away. Ended up uh, getting a ground ball on a pitch away. Off the plate, 2 and 0. Oh. Donna throwing strikes, 44 pitches, 30 strikes. One strikeout. Three and zero. Oh. Hunter may end up at second base after all. Donna having a hard time throwing strikes. Taking 11 walks, he struck out 14 times. You would think Joe would take a strike right here, but the way he's swinging the bat, it might be safe to leave it inside. I'm going to swing. But it's so. all four. Four pitch walk. The Twins have a chance here with one out, two men aboard. Seven run inning yesterday, a four run inning the day before that, a three run inning the day before that. Well, being a former pitcher, you like to see these numbers right here. Last six games, Twins offense has scored 38 runs. And doing a great job of two out hitting. You can see where they were the previous 12 games, only 41 runs scored. Seen some guys pick things up. The important guys in the lineup, like Plouffe, who comes up now. Suzuki's picked it up as of late. Twins are still waiting for Kenny Vargas to be the impact bat they hoped he would be. Here's Plouffe with two men aboard. Inside ball one. That's five straight out of the zone from Quintana. Just five walks over four starts on the year for Quintana. Foul back to the screen one on one. Quintana over his career, making his 92nd career start, averaged 2.5 walks per nine innings and about seven strikeouts per nine. Inside, two and one. Building a threat here in the fourth, similar to the threat the White Sox had in the second. Ended up filling the bases with one out. And Gibson got the ground ball double play. Check swing, called strike two and two. Stayed inside. He missed with those couple cutters, but then came back in with a fastball. Three and two, Suzuki will hit next. He's taken five pitches. Is it that? I beg your pardon, he fouled one pitch back to the net. White Sox have had a couple of very disappointing games. The only game they played in Baltimore, in front of an empty stadium, and it was a really bad game for them last night. Blue fast for time back down to the box. Get your thoughts together very quickly. Big pitch here for Quintana. Checked his swing and it's ball four. Tried the breaking ball, the cutter, and just missed down and in. So back to back walks loads the bases. With the bases loaded before Suzuki's at bat. You can follow Twins Baseball all year long in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Again, the Twins in April hit 302 with men in scoring position and for Kurt Suzuki, there are two such men. 
Hunter at third, Maurer at second, and Plouffe's at first. Inside ball one. And here comes Don Cooper. Yeah. Twins fans should feel really good with the guy at the plate because Suzuki last year and so far this year went trip to the mound by the Chicago pitching coach. But Suzuki's done really well in situations like this, and I think the reason is he doesn't try to do too much. You know, the Twins have some less experienced hitters, and in situations like this, they're trying to hit home runs all the time. And well, I think Suzuki would be quite content. In fact, might just be uh, looking to deliver a hit to the outfield. Oh, that seven run third inning last night it was Suzuki against Sale. Sale got 0 and 2 on him 3 and 2 on a pitch. He hit a fastball got a base hit drove in a run. So he battled for Sale after being behind. 1 and 0. Swing and a miss. Came back with a fastball at 92 miles per hour. Twins had Chris Sale on the ropes in through the third inning last night and wouldn't let him off. Well, they've got Quintana in a pickle. Follow back. I used a boxing reference. You gonna watch the fight tomorrow night? No. Okay. You? No, I probably won't. They're full of twins. Let's have a chance to break the ice here in the fourth inning. One and two to Suzuki. Find out what Quintana thinks his strikeout pitch is right here. Good take by the twins catcher. Yeah, very good take. Tried that breaking ball that lands just on the other side of home plate and Flowers smothered it. This is pitch number 25 this inning. Three and two with the bases full. And Escobar on deck. Twenty-five pitches, but only ten strikes. They came in at the inning, thirty-two pitches, twenty-four strikes. So struggling with his control here in the fourth. He's looking pretty good at putting the ball in play. Get done here on three and two. Fouled back over the Twins dugout. With the fastball at 93. White Sox in the game of Baltimore had the game fall apart in the very first inning when the Orioles scored six times last night with the race on the mound. It fell apart in the third. Quintana trying to make sure it doesn't happen again here in the fourth. Time called. Well, Suzuki got a low fastball from Sale in the third inning last night and hit had that base hit that drove in a run. Quintana's two fastballs have been up. Checked his swing, but he went, and Suzuki knew it. Got a breaking ball in the dirt, and he couldn't hold up. That's confidence in a breaking ball right there. Bases loaded, nobody out. And Quintana's doing a little pitch by pitch with Quintana to Suzuki. Fastball, he kept trying to bury it in. And the pitching coach came out, Don Cooper, and he went more with the fastball. And the breaking ball missed low. Now it's three and two. Suzuki fouled one off. And then Suzuki unable to hold up on that 3 2 breaking ball. Big at bat for the former Chicago White Sox utility player Escobar. And he takes strike one. Escobar coming to the Twins.
Twins in the Francisco Liriano trade. Toward the hole, backhanded by Ramirez, comes up firing, safe at first. And Escobar will get an infield hit, and we'll see if the White Sox take a look at it. Well, Robin Ventura up out of his dugout. He will wait and see. But Ramirez diving for this ball to his right comes up and one hops a Brayu. Bang bang play. He had no chance to go to second, maybe the third. And they're going to take a look at it, and I think the call will be reversed. But I was fooled in the ninth inning last night. Twins will have a run on the board with Torrey Hunter scoring. No, that'd be the third out. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought there's only one out. Well, shame on me. He's out. The ball, I think, hit the back of the first baseman's mitt before Escobar got a foot on the bag, but we'll see. Essentially the same play that we had in the ninth inning last night. Last night the call was out and it was not reversed. Out, inning over. Joyce saying it's out. What a great job by Quintana then. A nice play, another nice play by Ramirez. Twins leave the bases full and we're scoreless through four. Twins about empty handed in the fourth now in the fifth Connor Gillespie will lead off against Kyle Gibson taking ball one. I got some rocks in my hand. I'll find out how many outs there are. <laughs> I, I thought I, I forgot that the Brian Dozier was the first out of the inning. Mm -hmm. I thought there was bases loaded and nobody out when Suzuki struck out. So I thought the Twins had scored. I apologize. It's nothing. Right. Nothing. It's a, it's a mistake. We all make them. Yes we do. This was a small mistake. I know for a fact you've made bigger mistakes. Oh, yes, than I that. have. I wouldn't beat yourself up over that one because that's <laughs> the ball blasted to right. Hunter back to the wall and he makes the catch and crashes into the fence. Shades of his days at the Metrodome. Hunter with a great catch for the first out of the fifth.
Well, and the crowd just applaud Tory Hunter. My goodness, you wonder why he won nine gold gloves? He's fearless. Goes back, leaps, bangs into the wall at 39 years old. Good concentration. Ball in the center of the globe and knew exactly where he was. He was going to take a little something off that padding. What a nice catch. Remember a year ago, they had the thinner padding out there, and that in center field caused a couple of concussions. And Torrey might be grateful that the extra padding was added midseason last year. Tyler Flowers, and there is ball one. I don't know that in my years covering the Twins, I ever saw a center fielder that was as fearless as Torrey was. Up the middle and a base hit into center for Flowers. Kirby was great at going back and leaping at the wall, but Torrey played center field as if the fence out there didn't even exist. Yeah, you know, that's the way he played. You know, how many times did he hit that metal bar that uh, was at the baggy? All star game. Yeah. Well, there's a saying that great fences make great neighbors, but whoever said that didn't beat Torrey Hunter. Runner at first, one down, and now JB Shuck. Fences really didn't matter to Torrey in his heyday. And now with Flowers singling, the Gillespie drive turned into an out by Torrey Hunter. Might help Gibson get out of this inning. Trump tried to bunt his way aboard, and Gibson denied him with a nice fielding play. And now 2 and 0. Chuck, a very fast runner, a tough guy, one would think to double up. Gibson got a ground ball, the double play to thwart a rally in the second. Mauer with a great stop. Gets the lead runner at second. Joe Mauer with a fantastic play, diving to his right. Nice reaction right there by Joe Mauer holding on the runner, Flowers. And then going out and then just diving for this ball. Watch Joe kind of take a little crow hop over to his right. And then gets a force out at second base. Nice defensive play by Mauer. Two down, a runner at first. And now Micah Johnson, who has struck out twice against Gibson tonight. With a healthy lead at first base. Gibson misses ball one. And see how why it's how it's hard to uh, run off Gibson because he utilizes that slide step very well. will change how long he holds that ball to, to get that runner to stop. Side two and zero. Two and zero. Act foul. Two and one. Play at first and Chuck just got back. Kyle's got a couple pickoffs in his career, only 12 stolen bases against him in 18 attempts. So 
Pretty quick home, quick feet. Help you make that quick throw to first base. Get him at first, but the attention Gibson's paying the runner might make the difference between a throw out at second base or a stolen base at second. Stays put, chopper right side, Dozier to a knee, end of inning. In another time, in another ballpark, Torrey Hunter was fearless in the outfield. Here at Target Field, a different position, and the fearlessness remains. White Sox to start the bottom of the fifth inning and we're in the Minnesota Lottery Winner's Circle with $100 worth of scratch off tickets for Bernadette and Pat who are from New Ulm, Minnesota and celebrating the anniversary of their very first date. It was 10 years ago today and you guys as a couple have been to a lot of Twins games throughout the years. Well, I've had Twins tickets for a long, long time and she's even a bigger fan than I have. She's already, she was at the home opener already and so when it came for something to do for our 10th anniversary, I thought, what a better idea than the Twins. So You sprung it on her. Surprise. Yep, yep. Very much so. <laughs> well, congratulations. You get a circle from Bert, $100 worth of scratch-off tickets in honor of your 10-year anniversary. Thank, Thank you. you. Very welcome. Very, very nice. Very nice. You were both here by circle. 2-0 to Kenny Vargas leading off the Twins fifth. Pass ball fouled back. Vargas held out on the lineup for Three games started this homestand as the Twins tried to work with him, threw him some extra batting practice, but it was a different type of batting practice. They weren't throwing him strikes. They were in the cage throwing balls in the dirt, um, hoping to help him recognize pitches that weren't in the strike zone. He takes one there, and it's two and two. I don't think there's anything mechanically wrong with Vargas's swing. They just want him to swing at strikes. Two and two to the leadoff man here in the fifth. Fouled at the plate. Took a fastball and then what has really bedeviled him is with two strikes getting everything but a fastball. Change up. Curveball. That hard breaking ball down. Montana left that one up a little bit. Wow. And he got a fastball and belted it to center. 
Shane Robinson has done a nice job at the plate and in the field and in this homestand already. He's already picked up a couple of assists. Well, here he threw out the runner. Iglesias that whole that whole play that was in the Detroit series and then last night playing center field a nice two hop throw to Suzuki to be able to get Ramirez Eaton with a throw from center field and then talking with Shane this is what he was trying not to do not the Aaron throw but Eaton tried to airmail the throw to get it to home plate on the fly and it's chopped through the hole another base hit. Robinson has worn out that hole between third and short all year long so far and he backs up Vargas's single with one of his own. Well one thing about Eaton's throw as a pitcher your responsibility is to back up home plate and Chris Sale was standing on the mound. So even though that was a, a erratic throw the pitcher has to be back there to, to hopefully you know keep that ball from ricocheting off the uh, limestone the way it did. The specific question I asked Shane Robinson was, and you're a center field, I asked Tori the same question. You're a center fielder, you've got to make a throw. How do you take the mound out of the equation? Because Robinson's throw on two hops was just perfect, just to the side of the mound. And he says, and Tori said the same thing, you don't even think about the mound, but what you do try to do is keep the ball low. Right. So that you can get a true hop and hold the other runners in the event the ball is going to be cut off in the Area of the cutoff, man. Yeah, that's the key right there. Keep it low so that runner that hit the ball isn't going to advance the first to second or further. See what Santana's asked to do here. First yeah. and second, nobody out. And Santana probably asked to punt right here. Breo in on the grass at first. So too Gillespie at third. The ball Big. that Eaton threw was kind of an air mail. So if I'm a runner, I'm just going to keep going to second base. And that's what happened. Fox tracks presented by Jeep. Down and in ball one. Did not show punt there. Back to back innings now where the Twins have created a scoring situation against Quintana. He was able to pitch out of the threat in the fourth inning. Bases loaded one out. Now he's got first and second. Nobody out. Big man hits the dirt. <laughs> That's kind of twofold right there. It gets Vargas' slide back, but also to see if Santana maybe shows bunt. They're trying to keep Vargas close to second in case there is a bunt. I'd like to bunt it toward Gillespie at third base, make him feel the ball. Inside, nearly hit him. Santana's strikeout total is still high. He leads the team with 24 strikeouts, but he's done a much better job in this homestand making contact, getting some hits. Count in his favor right here. 2 and 0. After a pitch inside, dribbler foul two and one. Here's what we're talking about. Santana in his last five games again after sitting out of the lineup for a couple of games because of uh, some issues. And a high number of strikeouts. And you see that short, compact swing. And then his speed, he beat out that butt. Two and one. Miss two and two. First three pitches were inside, then Quintana went fastball away. 24 strikeouts, 79 at bats. Santana trying to get the twins on the board here in the fifth. Still came out with a fastball, one away. 93 miles an hour. Well, strikeout number three for Cantana. Just rearing back and throwing it down the heart of the plate. Here is Brian Dozier. Fly ball to right and a bouncer to short. Dozier with a 
three run home run against Chris Sale last night. Second on the team and runs batted in. Foul back, the strike. Both Dozier's home runs have come against the White Sox. One in Chicago against Mel Albers. A solo home run. Back on April 10th. And then last night's three run home run. Swing 0 and 2. Albers, by the way, on the disabled list. Broken finger as a result of the skirmish the White Sox had with the Royals. Quintana trying to pitch out of his second jam in a row. Head of Dozier 0 and 2. He fell behind Santana 2 and 0 and still struck him out. The last couple innings, his pitch count mounting at 75 right now. One and two with Johnson, the second baseman, cutting to the bag. Flowers came out of his crouch and bluffed a throw to second. Trying to keep the big man close to the bag at second. To center. And Vargas played it halfway now, retreats to the bag, and he's going to try. And he will advance, and so too will Robinson. Well, the big man played it right, got to third, and that opened up second base for Robinson. That's actually good base running because you know what you want to sit. The ball's hit in the air. You want to go halfway, but then he saw that Chuck had to go back on the ball, so then he hustled back to the bag to tag up. And when Chuck caught that ball, the big man slipped head first into. Did you feel that shake a little bit? Here's Hunter. He's got two hits already, and a hit to the outfield here could put the Twins up 2 nothing. Hunter grounding two singles up the middle. Strike on the outside corner. Torrey's had a good game so far. The two hits. Really nice catch crashing into the fence in right. In the top half of this inning. Back just beneath us. There's not much. Two strikes to Hunter. It's one of the most encouraging numbers of April. Very high, one and two. One and two to the Twins right fielder. And the bird goes to the backstop. And Vargas will score. And the Twins get on the board on a wild pitch. Quintana's first wild pitch of the year. And it went to Burt. Is that what I said? <laughs> Into the Burt? Into the Burt. Flowers tried to get in front of it. Ball ricocheted off him. And Vargas scoring the first runner of the ball game. And now Robinson at third. And strike three. And here comes Paul Molitor to come out and try to keep Torrey in the game. I'm not sure what he's claiming. Play umpire Greg Gibson made the strike three call. This is similar to how opening day ended in Detroit. The twins get a run on a wild pitch in the bird, and it's one to nothing. Let's take a look right here. That's that breaking ball. Oh yeah, he went. I 
The only thing I can think is he's pointing back like he foul tipped it. Torrey couldn't possibly be claiming that he didn't swing. Right. The twins get a run. It's one nothing. In a wild pitch, the Twins got the run on the bottom of the fifth, and now Alexei Ramirez, Melky Cabrera, and Jose Abreu facing Kyle Gibson. He's handcuffed the White Sox on just three hits so far. There's a breaking ball and a called strike one. Seems odd to me, you two, that this is just Gibson's third start against the White Sox. I mean, he was with the team all last year, most of the year before. I faced him once in 2013 and then only once last year. Good change up right there. I mean, we play the White Sox 19 times a year. Six different series every year. Do you think that he would have had more starts against Chicago than he has? Another breaking pitch in the dirt. Well hit balls against Gibson in the fifth, but he gave up just one hit. Got some help from his right fielder, his first baseman. And now Santana gets in front, sets and fires a high throw. And Santana might get charged for another error. And Santana with two errors in two different Ramirez at bats. He did a great job at getting in front of that ball, but just the release of the ball to Joe Maurer at first base was high. And Joe had to leap and try to sweep the tag and touch, touch Ramirez all at once and the ball out of his glove. So he sets himself up perfectly to just throw up high. Now Melky Cabrera, the third place hitter. Double play grounder. Dozier to Santana. And uh, Santana delivered a throw that was clocked higher than Gibson's fastball. Well, pitcher's best friend Gibson got a big double play when bases were loaded in the second inning off the bat of Flowers. And you want to pick up your defense. And Kyle's been able to do that the last couple times that Santana's made an error. Two down and now Abreu. Nifty double play four six three. On the very next pitch, there's a Brayu. He's bounced to third and struck out. Gibson got him on a breaking ball in the fourth. Fastball low. Gibson trying to pitch the Twins one game closer to the 500 mark. Tonight the Twins are 11 and 12. Six games left in the homestand. Swing and a miss.
Ryu, not the strikeout prone slugger you might think. Side two and one. He struck out against Gibson in the fourth inning. That's his 15th strikeout, but he's already got 77 at bats. And he's got five home runs, five doubles, and a triple. Does not walk much. Four times, twice intentionally. And a foul, two and two. Pitch count very good, 72. He hopes to get his 18th out on this pitch. Got him. Another breaking ball. All right, good changeup right there. Six shutout innings for Kyle Gibson and a one nothing for play. with a one nothing lead they filled the bases in the fourth didn't score nearly filled them in the fifth but did score on a wild pitch. Mauer to lead off the sixth he takes strike one. Mauer the double play grounder in the first drew a walk to help fill the bases in the fourth. Pop fly to left. Cabrera with the catch one away not many balls hit out of the infield. Against uh, Quintana, but Bauer lifts a lazy fly, one away. Pepsi fans of the game splitting their focus between the Twins here and the Wild. Game one of the playoff series with the Blackhawks. One down, and Trevor Plouffe, the batter. Long-suffering fans in this region, with the Twins struggling the last four years after getting into the playoffs six times in nine years. The ball hit to short, and that ball is booted by Ramirez. Bluff will reach with one out in the sixth, scooting to his left. He may be charged with an error. Now we've seen Ramirez make a couple nice plays, both of them against Escobar in this ball game. But here, a ball just hit to his left. Came up on him a little bit. They have not made officially saw the ball come up, but that ball probably should be caught. We'll see how they rule it. Kurt Suzuki, the batter, in the hit. 
Infield hit for Trevor Poop. He will take it. He had to go two steps to his left, right? Yep. Feel the ground ball. The ball kind of came up a little bit. I don't know if they get to see that. Suzuki takes outside. Kirk will toss and turn tonight over his fourth inning at bat. Bases loaded, one out. Game scoreless at the time. And Suzuki doesn't strike out much, and he certainly doesn't chase pitch as much. But he tried to check his swing on a breaking ball in the dirt on a 3 2 pitch. And struck out. Then Escobar retired on a close play, and the Twins came up empty handed. You know, credit the pitcher too. I mean, Quintana, that has a hard breaking ball that, you know, if you have good tight spin on it, like Quintana does, it looks like a fastball, and then the bottom just fell out of it. Kurt unable to hold up. Now 2 0. Oh. This will be pitch number 90 for Quintana, but he threw 50 in the fourth in the fifth total. 29 in the fourth, 21 last in. Foul back to a two. You see a total of 32 pitches the first three innings, and then 50 in the fourth and the fifth. So far here in the sixth. Who's checked it first? Boston Alex Rodriguez has had a pinch hit home run, number 660, to tie Willie Mays. I think too many people are going to get excited about that. I know I don't. Well, that's about as monotone of uh, uh, fact as I've given on the air in quite some time, so I'm not really wrapped up in the excitement of behind uh, Willie Mays. As I was when Barry Bonds passed uh, Babe Ruth. Two and two to Suzuki. And a high fly to left field. Cabrera back, making the catch. Ploof bluffs the tag. And Cabrera's throw right on the dot. Two down. Let's check in with Marty Gelder. You guys will take a look down on the farm, checking in with Double A Chattanooga. The lookouts yesterday against Jacksonville. Byron Buxton had a couple of hits, including a triple. Miguel Sano hit a home run. And tonight, Twins general manager said the reputations of those two players are going to precede them. They're not going to get a whole lot to hit, but both are learning that if they get a ball in the zone, they have to take a whack at it. And Dick and Bert Terry said he was really happy to be talking about how these two guys are playing because it means they are playing. Yeah, last year, of course, it was a very disappointing uh, year for Buxton, who was hurt most of the year. Sano didn't play at all, so it's understandable that they might be off to a slow start this year. Although not tonight, Buxton's gone, gotten three hits in his first three at bat, so he's on a bit of a roll at double A. I still think there's a very good possibility that Byron Buxton makes his major league debut this year. Less concerned or less uh, convinced, I guess, about uh, Miguel Sano. Here's Escobar. Thrown out twice by Alexei Ramirez. The second time he was thrown out, the White Sox had to challenge to get a call overturned. It looked like the Twins were on the board of the fourth. Escobar initially given an infield hit with the bases loaded and two out. But then justice prevailed, and the Twins ended up not scoring that inning. Yeah, Ramirez made a very nice play on that, a good strong throw to get Escobar. Checked his swing, and it's 2 0. Questioning that call to Greg Gibson is that ball inside. We've seen him work that inside part of the plate on a lot of the right-handed hitters. Not only do the fastball, that hard breaking ball, the change ups away. And there's the outside corner. Fastball away.
And that's who you want to have do the talking is your catcher rather than a pitcher. Swing and a miss, two and two. And now Plus saw the pitch in the dirt. Went halfway to second. Flowers throw backhanded by Johnson on one hop, or else Plouf would have been a dead duck. That's a nice pick right there by Flowers. He has a very good arm behind the plate. With the ball in the dirt, Flowers alertly picks it up and goes to second base. Luckily, Johnson able to get that yeah. short hop. It was a good play by Johnson who had to make a backhanded pickup of a one hop throw while he was on the run while he was moving. Two and two now to Escobar. And another breaking ball in the dirt. Another swing and a miss. And the Twins are scoreless in the sixth. But lead one to nothing. Story of the game with just one run on the board. Right, we got a pitcher's duel right here. Remember, Dozier hitting and luckily Vargas tagging up and scooting over to third because in the at bat to Torrey Hunter there was a wild pitch and Vargas scores the only run of the game so far. And Kyle Gibson six shutout innings, four strikeouts, no walks, couple double plays, some nice defensive plays behind him. He's out there for the seventh. 73 pitches, 43 have been strikes for Gibson. LaRoche Garcia and Gillespie to face Gibson here in the seventh. First pitch over for a strike. He's thrown that breaking ball for a get me over strike one pitch to a lot of these leadoff batters in the middle inning. Especially if they're first ball fastball hitters like LaRoche. He wants that fastball. So you get strike one. We saw Phil Hughes do that with his big slow slow. Play. Twins with a pull shift on for LaRoche in the infield. Outfield pretty deep for LaRoche, respecting his power. Two and one. No walks for Gibson. He did hit a batter. Gibson. Fielding play and a flip. One down. Second time that LaRoche has hit a ball back to Gibson. Our soup.com trivia question the first Big Ten conference pitcher to win all of his conference starts in a season, we'll just say it was a gopher. And it was Glenn Perkins. Nice going, Perk. A lot of left handers out in that uh, bullpen. Now four of them. You saw Tommy Malone sitting next to Perkins. Aaron Thompson, Caleb Thielbar. It's expected the Twins tomorrow are going to activate Brian Dunsing. Also have to activate their starting pitcher tomorrow, Ricky Nolasco. There will be some moves. One strike to Avisail Garcia. One and one. He 
Blues had a bullpen session today that went well. Told me that didn't even feel the whatever the hip issue was a couple days ago. Dribbler a foul ball wide of the line. So Hughes will make his start Monday against Oakland. Out of the bullpen went through his full bullpen session between starts. As he told Paul Molitor, he aired it out, felt just fine. So he'll go Monday in the opener with the Oakland A's. One and two to Garcia with one gone in the Chicago seven. Fastball up and away. Gibson went seven innings in his last start, went six and two thirds innings, two starts before that. Full count with Connor Gillespie on deck. Just missed the inside edge. And Garcia takes a walk. And first walk for Kyle. Not a bad pitch going back inside. The ball tailing a bit inside, just that little bit of movement. Garcia drawing just his fourth walk of the year. Now Gillespie. Kyle has been outstanding. Look at that. Second and third is the most pitches he's needed in an inning at 15. Got two ground ball double plays already. Who would like to get another one here? Instead, a solid single to center. Garcia going to second, and he'll hold up there. So the White Sox have the tying run in scoring position with one out. Gillespie jumping on that first pitch. Lining him right back up the middle. Only the fourth hit for the White Sox. Neil Allen on the phone out to the bullpen. Flowers hit into a double play in the second inning. Gibson jammed him, broke his bat. Flowers hit it up the middle. Santana to Dozier to Mauer, and the Twins were off the field. Loop with a nice pickup to his knees. One out and only one. Good play by Trevor Ploof to cut that ball off in the hole. Well, we have seen Ploof play better and better at third base. Range far to his left. And that was a nasty little hop that he had to corral into his glove. And then get up and get the force out at second base. That ball looked like look at that little hop or almost got by him. And Flowers beat it out. Gibson's pitch shutout ball here. He's had a lot of help behind him. Yeah, you need that. In right field at first base, now third base. And now JB Shunk with the tying run at third and two out. There's two outs, right? There are two okay, outs. Good. Inside, as long as Gibson doesn't throw one in the bird, he'll be able to get out of this inning. <laughs> Shunt trying to punt his way aboard. Gibson made a nice play to throw him out in the third, reaching the fielder's choice in the fifth. There's the corner, one and one. Yeah, that was a nice play by Joe Mauer. Remember, he was holding on flowers and Truck hit that ball to Joe's right. And Joe made a nice play to force out Flowers at second. Aaron Thompson, the left hand. Michael Tonkin, the right hand. High and tight with Garcia dashing a quarter of the way down the line. And Suzuki walking the ball out to Kyle Gibson. Over what they want to do here. Oh, 
Just the second time tonight that the White Sox have had a runner to third base. First time was in the second. Little looper. Bluth puts it away. Seven shutout innings for Kyle Gibson and a one nothing win lead. Fox Sports North is presented by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your local Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine for the everyday competitor in all of us. All right, love these pictures, Jules. Prints up one nothing. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Minnesota Twins. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Minnesota Twins. Neil Allen talking to Kyle Gibson. This one rifled to right center field. Vargas with a good day at the plate, a solid single, and now an attempt at a double. <laughs> and he's out. Uh, took a perfect throw. Mm. Boy, he hit that ball hard, jumping on that first pitch. And it looked like a double, but the big man rounded first base and credit Garcia. He got to that ball very quickly and made a perfect throw. That ball hit right in the gap, and you're thinking double, double. Look at Garcia cut it off, turns and throws a perfect one hop to Ramirez for the out. Hit it there, and you think, well, that's got to be a double. It has to be a double, but tell you what, Garcia made a great play and an even better throw. Shane Robinson taking ball one. And good to see Kenny, even though he's throwing out, be aggressive on the base pass, but also the last couple at bats, he hit that ball hard. And a couple of fastballs over the middle of the plate, and he mashed both of them. Swing and a miss, one and one. Scored on a wild pitch. One and two. And Robinson takes. You know, the Twins have had players like Robinson, guys who've been around for a while, similar in stature, Darren Mastrani, Alex Presley, guys like that. They've, they've not been able to do what so far Robinson's done. 
backhanded nicely and softly by Gillespie too now. I mean Robinson's given the Twins regularly really good at bats. He's been very solid in the field whether it's in center field or left. Two down. Tonight after the postgame show Fox Sports Live will get you caught up on a full night of NHL and NBA playoff action plus continued coverage of the second and third rounds of the NFL draft and highlights of tonight's MLB game. Fox Sports Live tonight at Fox Sports 1 or see it simulcast here on Fox Sports North. Two down in the seventh. And now Danny Santana. Tap foul one strike. Santana 0 for 2 at the plate. He's committed a couple of errors in the field. A fielding error and a throwing error. And he struck out. With runners at first and second. Nobody out in the fifth. Santana a couple times already this year respond well to getting some time off but ultimately what the twins want is for him to maybe have a bad game like tonight and come back tomorrow and have a good game without the day off chopper to Hopper. Ramirez over to Abreu on a quick three batter inning for Quintana in the seventh. America's studio sports update. Let's talk sports on Fox Sports North this weekend. The Twins and the White Sox coverage begins Saturday afternoon at 1230. Same time on Sunday. And join us for Wild Playoff coverage. Our pregame show, Wild Live, Sunday night at 630. And then Wild Live postgame following the game. Right here, it's one to nothing. We go to the eighth inning. Kyle Gibson still out there. This would be an inning, perhaps. Uh, normally where we'd see Casey Fiend. I talked with Casey today. He's got very good uh, news regarding his shoulder that forced him on the disabled list. He had an MRI done after the ball game uh, the other day, two days ago. It came back clean. There's structurally nothing wrong. And so they're just going to shut him down for five days, build him back up, and the hope is that he'll be back on the active roster in the 15 day when the 15 day uh, period expires. 1 and 0, oh, and now a fly to left center field. Escobar with the call and the catch, one away. Well, uh, you know, Gibson, this is the second outing in a row that he has gone out for the eighth inning. In his last start, he went out in the eighth inning in that 2 to 2 ball game against the Mariners, and then proceeded to give up a base hit. And uh, came out of the ball game and no damage done, and the Twins ended up winning in 11 innings, 4 to 2. But you want your starters to get deep into the ball game, and exactly Kyle right now at uh, what 91 pitches. One out. Here's Ramirez. Hot shot again. Bluff scoops it up. Two down. Well, nobody works harder in his position than Trevor Bluff. He's out here early every day working on his footwork. And take a look at Kyle Gibson here tonight. Two outs here in the eighth inning, picking up four strikeouts. 
He's given up only four hits. Three singles and a double. He's had some nice defensive plays behind him. He made a nice defensive play on that punt. A couple of balls hit back to him, both off the bat of LaRoche. And a strike at the knees. Cabrera is 0 for 3, hasn't gotten a ball out of the infield against Gibson. And Gibson fields and throws, and his easiest inning so far has been the eighth. The White Sox go quickly. One, two, three. Twins is still standing as we start the bottom of the eighth inning. And coming up after the game, we'll bring you Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink. And look at Kyle Gibson's outing tonight. A very good eight innings. Only four hits allowed to the White Sox in those eight innings. Plus, some of the great defensive plays the Twins made tonight. Some of them made by Gibson, fielding his position. Torrey Hunter made a catch at the wall in right field. Great play at third base from Trevor Plouffe. We'll show you those again, and we'll hear from the manager, Paul Molitor. It's all coming up with Tom Hanneman and Jack Morris on Twins Live after the game. Guys? I know Jack Morris had, what, 40-some shutouts, and I had some, but uh, you need, you pitch a shutout at this level, at any level. You need good defensive plays, and Kyle, credit him. He's made some good pitches here. A couple double play balls that got him out of jams, but... Uh, Great eight innings. He got hugged around a little bit, so he his day is, is probably done as Perkins is warming up in the bullpen. And Putnam's on the mound for the White Sox with Brian Dozier in the box. And Quintana pitched very well. Seven very good innings. The only run scored so far, remember, in this ball game came on a wild pitch. So we're gonna mess. We'll just you know there were two errors in the field. Danny Santana did not have a good day in the field, but Clearly, this game, if it's won by the Twins, one to nothing, will have been won by certainly good pitching. But this is the first game where the defense really might lead the Twins to a win. That and a very smart base running play by Kenny Vargas, of all people, who advanced from second to third on a deep enough fly ball that allowed the, him to score later on a wild pitch. But we've still got an inning to play here. Two and two now to Dozier. But it's fun talking about it, isn't it? A one nothing ball game. You don't see a lot of these. Butman in his second season with the White Sox came up with the Indians, spent some time with the Rockies and the Cubs. Dozier with a ball squirted off the end of his bat, and he'll get an infield hit. Putnam tried to scoop it up, and I think that ball was spinning like a top all the way out to Johnson. Yeah, right.
right off the end of the bat. Pitcher, got to cover that right there. Put your glove down, he put it down too late. The ball actually went by him. See that? And then Johnson made, came in, made a nice effort on a backflip off the glove. But Dozier beat it out for his first hit. See what the Twins do here to get Dozier to second base. Torrey, a good day at the plate so far. A couple base hits. Fox tracks presented by Carrier. Dozier on the first pitch and the ball gets by Flowers. Dozier will take a big turn at second. He won't advance to third, but it's nice to see a runner aware of what happened on the pitch. He did not go down into a slide. If the ball hit Karam, sometimes it does behind home plate here. Yeah, good little breaking ball that got away from Flowers, and Dozier will be credited with a stolen base. He was off and running. His second stolen base of the year. Now 1 0 to Hunter. Torrey would like to advance Dozier right here to third. Squaring the bunt, it's 2 0. Struck out his last time up, and I think his claim was to Greg Gibson that he had fouled the pitch in the dirt. But the inning ended nonetheless. And Hunter takes a walk, first and second, nobody out. And Mauer to the plate. 2015 insurance all-star game voting is now open. You can vote twins up to 35 times on the 2015 insurance MLB all-star game ballot at twinsbaseball.com. Voting is exclusively online now, available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote early, vote often. Help select the starting lineups for the 2015 all-star game. Vote at twinsbaseball.com now. Come to a ball game, you no longer have to pass ballots down the row of seats because there are no paper ballots anymore. A pitch and change for the White Sox with Bauer up with two men aboard.
chance to tack on an additional run or more here in the eighth. First and second, nobody out. Zach Duke comes into the game for the White Sox. Yeah, Duke making his 10th relief appearance. He's worked eight and a third innings. Does have 10 strikeouts, four walks in his first season with the White Sox. So, Twins saw him when he was with the Brewers last year. Our one for four lifetime against Zook Duke. Lefties two for nine against Duke with three walks. Bauer tonight 0 for 2 with a walk. Yeah, Duke has that three quarter type delivery, sidearm delivery. It's ball down the middle of strike. Very good numbers for Joe Maurer against left handed pitchers. Breaking ball taken for ball one. Duke signed as a free agent over the winter by the White Sox to a three year contract. With the National League All Star team with the Pirates back in 2009. That's when he was a starter. Drops down sidearm and gets a ground ball double play. Duke changed his delivery and it kind of ate up Maurer. Two down and on the play, Dozier goes to third. Yeah, second time Joe Maurer has hit into a six unassisted double play. Rally or what's left of it to Trevor Plouffe. Plouffe contributing to the eight shutout innings for Kyle Gibson with a couple of really nice plays at third base. We'll see if he can get a big hit here. Swing and a foul, one strike. Ooh, check swing and it hit the screen in front of the Twins dugout. Best thing baseball did. Put those screens in front of the players. And Perkins is ready. On U of M night, here's what he'll be facing. Bernie LaRoche and Garcia. And Flowers that time does a nice job keeping that ball from going to the backstop. The only run of the game scored on a pitch in the dirt that Flowers was unable to block, a wild pitch. Here, he had to make a tough catch on the ball that landed in the batter's box. One and two to Plouffe. Checked his swing, two and two. Gibson asking Marvin Hudson if he went the first base umpire. Marvin Hudson said no. Hard breaking ball. Trevor holding up. A nice stop by Flowers, and it's three and two with Suzuki on deck. Insurance run. Luth, the Twins cleanup hitter, to produce an RBI hit. Call third strike with a breaking ball. The Twins come up empty in the eighth. Glenn Perkins will have a one-run lead. Hoping to pick up a save on U of M night here at Target Field.
Gibson masterful tonight. Four hits over eight shutout innings. The ninth belongs to Glenn Perkins. Now Perkins making his 11th appearance of the year. Six for six in save opportunities. Eight strikeouts, only one run allowed in nine innings pitched. You saw the numbers earlier, though. What the three scheduled hitters have done against Perkins. Abreu, four for six with a home run. Inside, ball one. Yeah, Perkins did not pitch in Chicago in that series earlier this year, making his appearance, first appearance against the White Sox. Inside, 2 and 0. Oh. Twins won exactly one one to nothing game last year. All of last year, they in early May won a one nothing game in Cleveland. Three and one with LaRoche on deck. Balls have been pretty consistently at 93 miles per hour. And that's all Perkins has thrown. No country hardball. Held it up a notch to 94, a foul ball. Hard to catch up to that high fastball. Popped up right side. Maurer retreating and making the catch. Not an easy play right there. Of course, the outfield play very deep. Tory Hunter saying something to Joe to make him smile. And now for what's next. Tomorrow, a one o'clock game brought to you by Century Link. Hector Nuezzi's had a hard time throwing strikes. In Alaska off the disabled list, making his second start of the year. One down. Here's Adam LaRoche. Strike on the outside corner. Breaking ball past a diving Bauer into right field. First slider that Perkins threw, and LaRoche pushes it through the right side of the infield. Now LaRoche uh, gets his second hit of the ball game. And to see if they pinch run for him, which they do. Fascio is going to run for LaRoche. Time run at first with some speed now, and Abasail Garcia will bat. Double to straightaway center field, just out of the reach of Robinson in the second inning. And fly ball to center and a walk. Gets the lead runner. That's all they'll get, but such an important 
out to get it second rather than first. You know, Danny Santana did the right thing too. You know, he just made sure he got the out at second. No chance to get the runner Garcia at first. You become a first baseman almost right here. Watch Santana. Just hold that ball. Get the out. Now Beckham will hit. Runner at first, not second, and a slower runner at that. Garcia gets down the line okay, but he doesn't have Bonifacio's speed. Open away. Beckham against Perkins, five hits in 17 at bats, a couple doubles, and a home run. Up foul and out of play, one and one. <laughs> to left field and down for a hit. And Escobar has some problems with it. They're going to wave the runner around. And now McEwing puts up the stop sign. Escobar over. Beckham now at second base because of the fumble. Well, Escobar playing a deep left field. Beckham hitting this ball. And Escobar just making sure he keeps the ball in front of him. He doesn't want this ball. You can see kind of that little short hop just knocks it down, gets the ball back in quickly. Paul Molitor to the mound here, flowers the batter. Ooh, lucky that ball hit his knee. The ball gets behind him. Garcia may be been asked to keep going. Well, he was asked, and then remember the play we had here the other day where. Gene Glenn put the stop sign up late to his wall to Arcia, and Arcia all but stopped and then went home. That's how that play's supposed to work. Run hard through the bag and watch your coach for a late stop sign. Second and third, two down, and Flowers the batter with first base open, and J.B. Shuck in the on deck circle. Flowers one for six in his career against Perkins. Swing and a miss. One for six and Perkins has struck him out three times. Strike two. Find that little extra. Got him. Cut the plate in half with a fastball. And the Twins win a one-nothing ball game and have won the first two games of this series. Perkin picks up his seventh save of the year and seven save opportunities. And Glenn Perkins, excuse me, Kyle Gibson, eight shutout innings, picks up his second win. Flowers chased two fastballs and then took one right down the middle of the plate. Great eight innings for Kyle Gibson and Tom Hanneman. The Twins have to be really excited to see Gibson pitch deep into the ball game effectively now in back-to-back -back starts. No question about it, Dick. Great finish. The Twins were within a game of the 500 mark on the first day of May. Coming up on Twins Live, presented by CenturyLink, we'll break it all down, including the Twins defense. We'll hear from Molly and look ahead to Game 3 tomorrow afternoon.